Matthew 24, 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Is Matthew 24 about the rapture of the church? Is this event where we see Christ coming in the clouds and gathering the elect to himself, is this the same event that we see in 1 Thessalonians 4? It's crystal clear that this event we see in Matthew 24 where Christ is coming in the clouds, gathering the elect to himself, that this takes place after the tribulation and after the sun is darkened and moon is turned to blood. This is a great problem if you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. This has forced many people to teach that the event we see in Matthew 24 is different than the event we see in 1 Thessalonians 4. But is that true? Is Matthew 24 about the rapture of the church? And let me just start off by saying that is a very dishonest and misleading question. Now, why is that? Well, first off, the term rapture of the church or even the idea of the rapture of the church is not anywhere in the scriptures. We believe in a resurrection of the believers. We be, believe in a catching away of the saints, but they insist on calling it the rapture of the church to try to put it in your mind that there's a difference between Christ coming for the church and Christ coming for Israel that they try to separate. And we've already done many videos showing the foolishness of that teaching. Now, I'm not necessarily opposed to using extra biblical terms like rapture, I understand what that means, but you should be capable of articulating what you believe using language from the Bible. And if you are not capable of doing that, there's probably something wrong with your position. So instead of asking the question, is Matthew 24 the rapture of the church that we see in 1 Thessalonians 4, why don't we ask the question this way? Is the coming of the Lord that we read about in Matthew 24 the same event as the coming of the Lord? that we read about in 1 Thessalonians 4? Now that kind of sounds like a dumb question, but what should we call this event based on the text? Let's look what it says in Matthew 24, verse three, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? Verse 27, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 30, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 37, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 39, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 48, my Lord delayeth his coming. I think we could all agree that the event in Matthew 24 is in fact the coming of the Lord. Now, what words did Paul use to describe this event in 1 Thessalonians? Chapter four, verse 15, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Chapter two, verse 19, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. Verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There isn't even an argument about what Paul called this event and what Jesus called this event. They both called it the coming of the Lord. So are they two separate events? Now what the theologians will jump in and say is you've got to distinguish the difference between Christ coming for his saints in Christ coming with his saints. He's coming for his saints in 1 Thessalonians 4, and he's coming with his saints in Matthew 24, and they all recite that as if they are reading a pre-tribulational catechism or something like that. But let's look at again the words of Paul. Chapter 3, verse 13, to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. And if we look at the context of what Paul's talking about in chapter four, he's talking about their loved ones that they had lost that were already asleep in Jesus. And he literally says, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So Jesus is coming with his saints in 1 Thessalonians. Now, if the pre-trivers are right, they would have to admit that Paul and Jesus use the exact same title for their two different events that they were talking about. But let's compare these events 
and see if there's any reason to believe that they are different events. Notice in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Matthew 24, 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So we have Jesus coming in the clouds in both events. In Matthew 24, 31, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So in both passages, we have a gathering of the believers together. We have a catching away taking place in both passages. And now this is where people get really dishonest and they'll start saying things like things that are different are not the same. And they'll say, where do we see the resurrection of the dead? In Matthew chapter 24, they'll start pointing out details mentioned in Matthew 24 that we do not see in 1 Thessalonians 4 and vice versa. And because different details are specified, they declare them as two completely different events, even though there's nothing about both of these passages that conflict with each other that say those other things could not be happening during that time. The simple fact is, Jesus is focusing on things that people who are alive are going to be experiencing and seeing at his return. The Apostle Paul, the whole context of what he's talking about, is he is comforting a church who had lost loved ones to death He's just letting them know that there will be a reuniting with them that happens to take place at the coming of the Lord. So they are both talking about the coming of the Lord. It's just they are focusing on different aspects of the coming of the Lord. But there's no reason for us to believe that these are two different coming of the Lord's with his saints. They are without a doubt the same event. Separating these two events is a perfect example of eisegesis. And that's where one reads in their doctrine into the text. There's nothing in the text that would tell us these are two different events, but that is the doctrine of many people, so they force it in there in their interpretation, and that is very dishonest. People, unfortunately, are doing this because of the fact it is spelled out that the coming of the Lord happens after the tribulation after the sun is darkened and the moon is turned to blood. And that is very inconvenient if you believe in a pre-tribulational secret rapture. We're also supposed to ignore the fact, too, that right after Paul talks about the coming of the Lord in 1 Thessalonians 4, he says in 1 Thessalonians 5, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And that's a problem, too, if you're pre-tribulational, because the Bible is also clear the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. These simple facts we looked at are just more examples of many things that debunk a pre-tribulation rapture. Let's stop just going with the flow and going with the popular position out there and let's go with what the scriptures clearly tells us. The coming of the Lord happens after the tribulation after the sun is darkened and moon turned to blood. And 1 Thessalonians 4 is, in fact, about the coming of the Lord. And let's start forcing people to ask the question in the right way, and that is, is the coming of the Lord in Matthew 24 a different event than the coming of the Lord in 1 Thessalonians 4? They will not want to say that because that's not in their pre-tribulational catechisms that they recite to a T. And, but at the same time, there's no denying both passages refer to those events as the coming of the Lord. So let's, for, let's force these people to be honest with the scriptures. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope it was a help. God bless.